Hey guys, um, I wanted to share with you something. Um, I've been trying to make a um, DC motor based servo um, using a uh, geared, small geared motor and a um, potentiometer for absolute position feedback. Um, it's intended to control a throttle body on a small one cylinder uh, engine, um, so it needs to um, have absolute position and um, it needs to be quite fast. Uh, in its operation. So um, let me show you what I've done. Um, here is my prototype um, circuit. Now ignore this this side of it. Um, it's essentially just a um, an Arduino Pro Mini here with an FTDI uh, programmer um, attached to the end. Uh, so that's uh, the, the Pro Mini is all it is, and the, the thing poking out the back of it is just um, just to program it. Um, we've got 12 volts coming in, uh, 5 volts uh, coming out. The 5 volts is from the uh, computer at the moment. Um, basically, the uh, the Pro Mini drives a um, L298 um, H bridge. Uh, drives only one side of it, the H bridge. Uh, we've we've only got one motor here, so. Um, so yeah, and then we've got uh, the motor itself. Um, this is an S cap or E S cap um, cordless DC, 530 or 540 RPM at the output shaft uh, geared geared motor. It has actually got a, um, a relative uh, encoder position encoder at the back here, but we're not using it. Uh, that's what the extra pins are for. But um, just using the uh, just powering it up at the moment uh, with PWM. Um, then we've got uh, a spigot here which sits on the output shaft. Um, uh, turn this up on the lathe. Uh, basically, the, the aim is to mount it uh, with a little bearing on the end of it, so um, th so it's not subjected to side side thrust um, uh, and, and 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 forces which it might. Uh, wear out over time uh, and then on the end here we've got a um, just a little uh, breadboard here um, perf board um, with a, uh, a, a, a rotary position um, potentiometer uh, which is basically just a standard bot but with a hollow shaft uh, hollow end hollow hole cut into the end here so the shaft of the um, the, the, the this big it can fit through uh, it's got a little flat here which locates it um, and keeps it um, keeps it tight and in sync and then we've got just three cables coming out of that so we've got um, 5V ground all the, the other way around doesn't matter and then the wiper goes straight into the Arduino uh, for the position feedback uh, and I've just rigged up a small pot here to uh, to control our desired um, position here so if I um, if I demonstrate so if I hold uh, this circuit here, you can see it, it sort of turns. Anyway, um, if I try and push it down, it springs back. Try pull it up, it springs back. And uh, so it's reading the, uh, the, the the feedback from this um, pot here and compensating accordingly. Which is pretty cool. It's quite strong for a small motor. Actually, I really recommend these. It's, uh, you can find them on AliExpress or eBay. They're about just over ten or each, I believe. Ten pounds UK uh, money. Uh, so let me show you what happens if I turn this potentiometer. Uh, so this, as I said, uh, sets our desired angle at the moment. Um, eventually, it's going to be controlled by um, uh, by a set of rules, uh, watching the engine RPM and, and so forth. Uh, so basically, so it's a load governor. Um, so it watches the RPMs dip, and it, it operates the throttle accordingly. So um, if I turn the pot here, uh, hopefully you can see that it's turning the um, the output shaft here. Um, it's wobbling because this board is unsupported. Um, uh, yeah, uh, there we go. It's very, very, very snappy actually. This this motor, um, it's running on 12 volts. Uh, it's 12 volts rated. If I put the camera here, I can hopefully show you how 
click it is. Oh, pot's not secured very well to the leads. Anyway, um, does tend to freak out every now and then. So I haven't really, I haven't worked the code, worked out the code, a hundred percent. Um, and it, it's essentially a, a very it's it's a ropey kind of PID. Um, it's it determines the error amount and it tries to compensate the error, um, change adjusting the speed uh, according to how how large the error is. Um, so I'm going to show you what I'm planning to do with it. So this is a 3D printed bracket, and um, I don't know if you can see that. And I've got a, a spare motor here just to demonstrate what's going to happen here. So we've got a little five volt, uh, five volt, five millimeter ID bearing in the end there, which f fits over the the end of the shaft here just before the circuit board. And the circuit board will sit on the end like so. And the uh, the armature is just going to swing like this. I have a little rod, um, push rod, or uh, connected to the to the throttle body. Um, so that's the mechanicals. It's pretty neat, huh? Um, anyway, uh, I'm gonna go through the code. This is the code. Um, it's very short and very basic. It's essentially a, a very ropey version of PID. Um, and what PID is, uh, it, uh, it basically monitors the error amount of uh, what you've asked um, a certain parameter to be and what it actually is, and then it uses that error to determine how much it needs to move in which, yeah, you know, in, in how much it needs to uh, vary the output. So uh, in our case, it's in our case it's position. So we see the uh, the position using the potentiometer. We determine the error amount, so the difference between where it is and where it needs to be, and then uh, that error amount, um, depending on its magnitude, uh, the magnitude of the error amount drives the speed of the motor, and the direction in which we need to turn the motor is set by just uh, reading whether it's more or less than the required position. So to go through the from the top here, we've got uh, we just define the um, the uh, direction uh, pins here for the H bridge and then the PWM pin is, is the main output that gets pulsed. If you're unfamiliar with the L298, um, the way it works is um, for every for every side, so for every channel, uh, it has a Two, two direction pins so one is high one is low for clockwise one is low one is high for anti-clockwise and then you pulse this one to determine the speed um, and uh, that's just the standard PWM so 0 is 0 volts and 255 is 5 volts which is 100% duty cycle I believe um, then following on from that we've got the current angle which is the angle that the, uh, the feedback uh, potentiometer is uh, this guy is at the moment and then the required angle is the angle of what we want the angle to be which is I'll put here the error amount is the difference between these two the remapped error amount is I'll go, I'll go into that in more detail in a minute but basically it's just a, a, a the range is remapped um, and then we've got the we've got an acceptable error um, variable here. Um, I'll explain that in more detail in a, in a moment. So moving on, uh, void setup, your usual setup uh, which is uh, the serial speed and then the uh, d uh, defining whether these pins are inputs or outputs. So motor P1, motor P2 and PWM pin are all outputs. Uh, we don't need to declare the uh, uh, the analog inputs uh, yet. Moving on to the main loop here, the main loop is this guy, and um, what the main loop contains is um, first of all we call these two functions. Uh, the the reason I've done this is just to make things a little bit neater. Um, 
and so I've, I've, I've wrapped these uh, these steps into functions and functions are uh, separate branches that you know you, you know this probably if, you, if you're looking for this uh, video they're the they're branches of, of code that the um, the main uh, see the, the main routine can can sort of branch off and it it's as if they're done simultaneously they're not quite but for, an, for all intents and purposes it, you know it splits the the processing into different branches um, so this is this is calling a, a function called read and condition angle so at the moment so first the first thing we do is we want to read the current angle of whether where the, uh, the the servo is at the moment um, so if we go straight down to that read and condition angle is this function here it's very simple um, it reads the analog input and then it sort of caps it, caps the top and bottom of I've tried to limit the, uh, the the range of motion here. May not be the best way of doing it, but that's just the way I did it. Um, so if it's if it's less than 200, it just sets it to 200. If it's more than 800, it sets it to 800. Very simple. We move back up to the main loop. Uh, reading condition of required angle. So uh, if we go down to here, this is the required angle. Uh, the required angle is our potentiometer, our main uh, potentiometer. Uh, that that is our input. Um, analog read one. Uh, if it reads less than two hundred, it sets it to two hundred. If it reads more than eight hundred, it sets it to eight hundred. Uh, that's just simple. Uh, it's just kind of limiting uh, the range. Um, so we have plenty of buffer for, for the thing to slow down and stop at the end if it has to, if, it, if it's uh, traveling at some speed. Um, back up to the main loop, uh, we've got a, a conditional uh, ser conditional block here. Uh, this block determines the direction of the rotation. So if our current angle, now that we've read the current angle and the required angles, these variables are available for our main loop here. So if our current angle is less than our required angle, that means we want to be turning in one direction. And so we set one p, uh, pin one to high, pin two to low. If the current angle is more than required, we want to spin in the opposite direction. So we set the opposite pins. So we, we pin one goes low, pin two goes high. Uh, that's just telling uh, the L298 which direction to turn in. Um, now moving on, uh, calculate error amount is a function uh, which which has two parameters that go into it, so they get passed to the function. So uh, calculate error amount. If we move down, this is this one here. So calculate error amount. Uh, integers, current angle, and required angle. Now what this does, it takes the difference of where we are and where we need to be uh, and then uh, wraps it in this ABS which is the absolute um, pr pr processing which turns a negative, any negative numbers into a positive number so it just essentially wipes that minus off the front of our result. So um, uh, our error amount will be negative um, if it's in one direction and would be positive if it's in the other direction we just need it to be positive so we just uh, wrap it in this ABS um, uh, I don't know what it's called a function or we wrap it in ABS basically um, the direction is already determined here where the motor needs to turn so all we need to know is how far to turn so this is what this works out so well, it does two things. It works out how much to turn and how fast to turn as well. Uh, so let me explain that. Um, remapped error amount is the error amount that's been remapped into a different range. So because our position feedback pot reads between 0 and 1024, uh, we can say that our error amount is going to be a range of a thousand. I just rounded it down. I don't know why, because why not? Uh, that's our error amount. Now, if we we need to map that to to a speed of the motor, so the, the the further 
we are from where we need to be, the faster we need to to turn the motor to correct it. Uh, and then the closer we are to where we need to be, we need to then slow down. So this is what this does. It basically says, if your error amount is huge, 1000, then drive the motor at the fastest speed possible. Um, if your error amount is zero, or say like, I don't know, 10, then uh, this is probably gonna be, what, like two or something. Um, it, it just allows us to pipe this error straight into a speed value uh, for the motor. It's just very simple. Um, um, and then we have a uh, filter here, which kind of caps off the. Um, it, it gives us a dead zone in the middle of, of of our kind of our motion. So the acceptable error we've decided, defined here at the top in the variable definitions as being four. Uh, four is just the number I just pulled out of thin air, to be honest. Uh, any you know. The, the wider this error is, the the less accurate. But the more calm the the the, uh, the servo arm is going to be. If it's at, if it's actually zero, like if we remove this error amount, if we remove this dead spot in the middle, it's just going to bounce back and forth, and it's probably going to wear out the gears and the motor quite quickly and the pot as well. Um, so we're just saying here if if the remapped error amount is Oh, this could probably be the actual error amount, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, which one is, is is up to you? But um, I've, I've used remapped. If the remapped error amount is uh, less than the acceptable error, then sort of forget about it. Then just assume it's it's zero. So let's just set it to zero. Um, if we then go back to the main loop, uh, we've we've now accomplished what the uh, the remapped error amount is so we use that as speed and so we say analog right PWM pin uh, this is the speed so the larger the error the larger the speed the smaller the error the smaller the speed the slower the thing goes to correct it and then we just print this uh, current angle to the serial port just for debugging purposes um, so yeah, pretty simple, pretty ropey, uh, pretty basic, but uh, easy to, to, to get working and get your head around. And um, yeah, I hope uh, hope it's been useful. Thank you for watching. I hope uh, I haven't bored you to death. And um, yeah, good luck.